the last time I saw my son. It was October 17th, 2016. I came home that evening with my daughter. My husband, everybody was settling in to go to bed. Enrique walked into my room with his pajamas on, like he was about to go to bed. Nothing out of the ordinary. In the morning when I woke up, I noticed he was not in his bed. So then I began texting Enrique over and over. I even sent him a little bit of an angry message saying, hey, where are you? You're going to be late for school. It was weird. All of my son's belongings were still home. Enrique's phone would go straight to voicemail. So at that point, I have no idea where he's at. I'm about to go to work. That's when I knew that something was wrong. So about a week uh, after Enrique Rios went missing, um, I was assigned to the uh, case. There was some mention that he had previously ran away before. I was kind of in the mindset that, OK, you know, he'll probably be back in, within a couple of days or maybe even a week. When I realized that the police were not classifying my son as anything else besides a runaway, I was pretty angry. I started taking matters into my own hands. So I started making videos of myself and posting them all over Facebook. <laughs> if you can call me, call me. I need you home, baby. <laughs> I need you home. <laughs> Over the next few weeks, it went viral, and I did have about 20-something million people all over the world sharing that video. But I still don't have my son home. Three weeks in, I am on Facebook. And I noticed that there's another mom in the area of Alicia Moore. And she's posting about her son. She posted that Elijah was missing. So if anybody knew anything about where he was, to please reach out to her. Enrique knew Elijah Moore. They were both in the same program. And they were at the same school. Their circumstances are kind of similar. They have to be tied together. November 4th, 2016. It was Elijah's birthday weekend. He was going to go to Sacramento to my sister's and hang out for the weekend. But he never made it home. It was a Friday, and he was happy about being able to get his check. When Elijah got out of school, the bus dropped him off at the check cashing. This was maybe around 4. Finally, I was able to get a call back from him. And he was like, Mom, I'm going to go take care of something, and I'll be home later. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? What are you, you know, like, you, your brother's over here waiting. You guys are supposed to be going to Sacramento. And he was like, I know, Mom, I love you. I'll be there shortly. And he hung up. And that was the last time I spoke with my son. That was the last time. There was probably over 50 search warrants written in this case uh, for different forms of social media or electronic evidence in this case. And it doesn't happen right away uh, when these companies are served. Um, sometimes it can take months to get returns back. So the Facebook documents that we had requested came in, and we were able to look through them and find names like Shandell Shannon. Shandell was a local uh, marijuana dealer in town. Elijah Moore's best friend told me that before he went missing, Elijah Moore had committed a robbery against David Frost, Jesus Campos, and Shandell Shannon. 
Elijah was looking for marijuana, specifically three ounces of marijuana. And the meet was set up by Shandell Shannon for that to occur. Elijah came with a replica firearm. It was not a real firearm, but a replica. And basically robbed David and Shandell and Jesus. So once we had names, there was a lot we were able to do. And, and that's one of the tools is looking at someone's digital footprint. The evening of this robbery, Facebook records show that Shandell Shannon had been reaching out to Enrique Rios. Shandell knew Enrique as being a friend of Elijah and that they could probably find out where Elijah was at through Enrique. A year and a half into the investigation, we were finally able to announce that we had made arrests in the disappearance of Elijah Moore and Enrique Rios. One of the days at trial included some pretty graphic testimony about the ways that Enrique and Elijah died. Once he's in the car, they take him up to Knight's Landing. They wanted Enrique to lead them to Elijah. And Enrique didn't want to give up his friend. Enrique was taken alongside the river. He was shot in the stomach and then later shot in the head. Enrique was in the river as he's being shot at and then ultimately shot in the back of the head um, because he wouldn't give up Elijah. Even in the moment, a 16-year-old had the strength to be that loyal to his friend. The day of Elijah Moore's murder, they were just to the west of the check cashing place. Jesus had pointed out that there's Elijah. David approached Elijah, and David's a much bigger person than uh, Elijah Moore was. David told Elijah to get in the trunk of the car. He said that Elijah willingly got into the car. They then drove just north of Knight's Landing and to a uh, wooded area along the river. David Frost knew to have everyone shut the phones off so we couldn't find the bodies. They zip-tied Elijah Moore's hands behind his back, took him out of the trunk, and made him walk about 300 yards and lay on his stomach, zip-tied his legs together. They had plastic bags, a shovel, a pickaxe, a can of gasoline, and a can of bleach. They all took turns hitting Elijah with tree branches. They then dug a hole about three feet deep, put Elijah's body in the hole, poured gasoline, set him on fire. They then drove to the drawbridge in Knight's Landing, disposed of the pickaxe and the shovel in the waterway there, and then drove to the Frost House where they all grabbed a change of clothes and then went to Denny's and had breakfast. During the verdict, we were all crying. David Frost was guilty and was going to be behind bars for life. After the sentences were handed down, the judge said this case was one of the most evil that he'd ever overseen. And what he told Shondale and Jesus was, you do not deserve to live in a civilized society. And he sent them to prison for life. I'm scarred for life. I'm never going to be the same person. A piece of me is missing. Without my child, who I know had so much potential and so many dreams, I won't be able to experience that with him. Look back where past. What I miss the most about my son is just having him with me. Seeing him and his sister play. <laughs> I just want to hug him. I just want to talk to him, want to hear his voice.